on the SharePoint framework side of the house, uh, SharePoint framework is really intended to be the, and it is the easiest way to build your enterprise solutions uh, for Microsoft 365. Um, it has the automatic single sign-on, automatic hosting, uh, which is a big thing, so you don't have to worry about Azure hosting or anything, any of those uh, configurations, plus operational cost and maintenance there, and then consistent dev experience and using industry standard web stack tooling. Now, the name is a bit confusing, uh, but like Jeff Deeper, loves to say uh, SharePoint is the content and application services for Microsoft Teams and for the broader Microsoft 365. So we are looking into potentially again uh, naming the SharePoint framework. There is an ongoing discussions on that one internally. Uh, not to change the tooling, not to change the framework, but renaming the SharePoint framework potentially again to address the new scope. Because if we think about what we can build with SharePoint framework, it's not just about SharePoint. You can, uh, with SharePoint framework, you can build web parts, extensions, and web apps uh, for SharePoint online. You can also build uh, Viva connection cards. And in the Viva connection side of the house, you can also take advantage of war, uh, web parts and extensions. And you can also build different experiences in the Microsoft Teams. And we're all the time committed on making the experience better and better, across all of these products and potentially even more. There's an interesting future dimensions and discussions on this. Now, one of the classic requests related on SharePoint Framework for many, 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 many years is that, well, please, 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 Microsoft, allow us to build a or develop custom modern forms with custom edit experience. So as part of the, the SharePoint framework initial release back in 2017, and after that we've been having, is it 20 releases already uh, consistently a few times in a year? Um, quite often people started asking that, well, I would like to have an extensibility options and an editing experiences in the list level. As part of the 1.13 release of SharePoint, 1.3 version of SharePoint framework, we introduced field level customizers, but those only works when we are, when you are viewing a field value in a list, not when you're editing a field value in the list. Uh, and that was kind of a not an optimal experience. So one of the number one requests, um, do we have the number of votes? Yes, we do. To, uh, one, of, one of the number one requests in the Microsoft Feedback Center related on SharePoint has been this item with 2,579 votes. This picture taken today and it's probably uh, in, it's a bit more than that uh, nowadays. So it's in top five of the most requested capabilities within the SharePoint, which is kind of cool that we are finally addressing this. And, and yes, it's about time. There are certain internal reasons and discussions why this took a while, but we are finally getting there. Now, how will this actually work? The first version, will be released as part of the 1.15 and 1.15 preview, which is coming either this week or next week, will have a preview capability of this uh, to be available. But what we basically provide you is an option to associate an item level editing a new or a view form. So you can override the whole form any way you want. Now, just to be just to be super clear on this, this is in an item level. We're going to talk about those limitations as I do the, the demo as well, and that is where we are starting. So basically, in the first version of this in 1.15, when 1.15 goes out, you cannot override the whole list. So you will not have an option to override the whole list where we will show multiple items. You can only override the new edit and uh, and view individual item experiences. But what's really cool on those overriding support, as you can see on the right side, the, the, the bigger picture, is that you will have the full ownership of the whole canvas. Now, we're not going to give you, just to be super clear, setting the scenes, we're not going to give you reusable controls, we're not going to give you reusable buttons or anything like that in the first stage from the engineering side. It might be that community is building something, that's a separate discussion. But the engineering will give you the full uh, white canvas, which you can own. You can build whatever you want here uh, using then React, Angular, uh, no framework, uh, whatever is your preferred option. And that's actually really, really, really cool. You will get access on the context details in the code. Uh, so you can basically say I have this dot context dot list ID or this dot context dot item ID. So you know exactly which item is requested to be edited or if it's a new item that is getting created. And then uh, as you run, the save operation with the buttons which you can draw in this canvas, and then that will close the window and we will get back on the actual list experience. 
So that's kind of the experience here, uh, looking uh, and, and super excited to finally get things in moving. And again, it's a first step. I will come back on the, the, the follow-up follow steps uh, after the demo as well. So what we will have in 1.15, and this is what we will have in 1.15 with the initial preview uh, within uh, with this week or next week, and I'll show this one in practice. So as part of the creation uh, of the 1.15, so I'm running a 1.15 version of 1.15 beta version, beta 5 version of the SharePoint framework here. Oop, uh, let's close up things. Let's zoom up the things a bit and let's close that one. And so now if I run Yo Microsoft SharePoint, so run the Yeoman generator of SharePoint framework, we will have additional options. So I'm running SPFX Yeoman generator 1.15 beta 5. Uh, it's, by the way, really cool that it's, the version is visible finally in that window, which is, which is great. And let's call this a new project, so that's fine. If I select now extension, we will have a new extension type here, which is the form customizer. And that's actually the one which is then targeted to be used in the view editing or view editing or new experience of an individual item in the list. And we will provide you two different templates. Uh, so let's give it a name. Uh, no framework and the React template as a starting point. But again, like with anything with SharePoint framework, you can use any JavaScript framework uh, and libraries. We in Microsoft, we use React, but that's not set the stone that you need to use React. Again, up to you, what are we going to do then? And it is also for libraries. So that's actually a good point, Russell. Uh, thank you for calling that and that out. So uh, it will work actually in the library level as well. So technically libraries are lists with files. So it's super, super close, uh, technically behind of the scenes. Now I'm not gonna run the creation in here because I already created uh, this, a new solution. This has been just created uh, before our, our session. So I will actually go into Visual Studio Code and I will show you what we got. So surprise, surprise, it is a typical Visual Studio, sorry, SharePoint framework solution uh, with a package solution, nothing special as such. Uh, it will have the default extension available, uh, which is then based on uh, the new component type, which is a base form customizer. So this is the new component type, a new extension type, which we can then associate to be used in a content type level. I will come to the details on that one in a second. And then in here, in this component, uh, it is relatively simple, at, at least as we start uh, start the game, uh, start the journey. Uh, it will basically have a render option, and then again, you can do whatever you want and you have full access on the DOM element and uh, basically the div and you can render whatever you want inside of that section. Full ownership, no control from our side, which gives you the full flexibility on what you want to render. As we're then uh, closing in, if, if uh, you can call on close or on save, and those are technically the ways of, okay, are we going to do saving or are we going to go closing in this case? So you would be drawing those buttons uh, and make that happen. So relatively simple uh, from that perspective. Jim is asking how secure it is. I'm not sure if that's related on this one, but of course, this is SharePoint framework solution. Uh, you as an administrator, you deploy this, you are unable to otherwise get these solutions in place. And so secure admin controlled, like any SharePoint framework solution. Now, as we start then uh, this journey, and as we start testing this, let's do a quick example on how I would be doing development. Uh, in this case, I'm going to start at the, the terminal. Uh, in the serve JSON, we do give you a default, let's say, starting point of doing debugging. And let me be super clear, this is part of the preview experience, uh, because as part of the initial preview, modern lists are not yet aware of this new component type and there's no API level support of setting this. So we need to do some tricks and, and so we can start doing development and testing, but you cannot access from the UX directly to this experience yet. That's going to be coming over later this spring. So that's our default structure and that's our default uh, debugging thing in the serve JSON. So let me go back on my develop uh, test tenant and let me actually create here. I didn't create a new list or did I? Let me create a new list. And let's create a new list and plank list. Let's call this uh, call demo. Doesn't really matter. What's the name is, and let me create that. 
and it is of course a normal normal list so whatever you want you can do it with the list you can do it with the list so no no problems with that now one of the challenges as we start this journey and again this is mainly for the preview preview not for the ga uh, is that we need to be able to now figure out what is the list item ID, the, con the actual content type ID within this list to be able to associate this component in the debugging mode. And again, we will make this easier, uh, but for me to do that, uh, the easiest way for me to do that is to now go to the edit current view. Let me actually zoom this a bit more, and then I will go to classic uh, advanced settings. In the advanced settings of the list, I'm going to go to advanced settings, advanced settings, advanced settings, and I will say allow management of content types, because then this gives me the visibility of the content type level. Uh, you can programmatically solve this. You can programmatically then access this information and set the information also in, a con in the content type level whenever we get the feature G8. Now, what happened with that setting? is that now I have this content type section available in the list would be the same as in libraries. And now I can actually go to the content type of item. Now, in this case, um, the content type ID of this particular item is visible in the URL. And this gets a bit tricky. Again, this is a preview, preview, preview uh, as the first preview of 1.15. So that is the unique ID of the content type of the list item within this list. Uh, we can see that it's a list item because it starts with a 0 x 0 1, 1 0, 0. Those who are familiar with SharePoint content type IDs uh, may actually recognize that. Uh, but there's a, there's a certain level of a, let's say, historical knowledge on, on those content types. Now, let me then go to the actual code. And as I'm doing debugging, uh, again, Jim is referring, that's the list content type ID. It is correct. That is correct. Again, terminology things are uh, a bit debatable always, but as I'm doing debugging, I want to do debugging against that list. I'm going to say that the content type which I'm associating this item is that particular content type. So I'm able to then actually associate the code to actually working there. I need to, of course, also update the base URL. So let me go to in here. Let me go to the list. Where is my uh, call demo? There we go. So that is the content, uh, the tenant ID. And then we are sites, and that's something what we need to update as well. So let me actually update that accordingly. We are in list demo URL. So this is then enabling me to do debugging of my code in that list item when I'm actually going to do cop serve. Now, before I do that, and before I we, we see that did my uh, settings and everything work, I just wanted to call out that uh, in the code, of course, as we are writing SharePoint framework, uh, components, uh, you will get access on this context. And then in the context, we will get access on the list uh, uh, list uh, instance. We will get access on item ID if the item does exist already. So those are the, the basically keys to do updates and then uh, accessing the information and all of that uh, using the context where the object is getting executed. Cool. Now, I'm going to do here a serve. And that's, oop, if I can write, let me actually abort that, cop serve. Um, and based on now our uh, serve.json configuration, it's going to start to default, uh, default uh, hosting, and it's going to fire uh, the running in here. And now I have clearly a bug, which I know and that I have a bug here. Now, I started that, but I can see immediately that my debugging is starting in a completely wrong list. So something is wrong. Let me go back in here. Let me go back and search the JSON. And we can see that, didn't I save this? Is the saving is missing? Oh, that's what's missing. Okay, so let me add there. That's in a wrong way. I didn't update the, the actual site correctly. And let me actually abort that so we can see that it's starting in the right context. So one more time checking. It is a subsite collection called comps in that tenant. That looks good. That URL looks good. That was the call demo. And now if I do one more time called serve, we can actually see that the browser window starts in the context of that URL and it feeds the right query parameters and it starts loading the script and the debug script. And when I click that one, we still have an exception. No. <laughs> Ah, let's see one more time. Let me see what I'm doing actually wrong here. 
and load deeper scripts. And there we go. Now we didn't actually get any input, so let's do this one more time in here. Let me go here and write the code. Where do we have the output? And call demo, call demo, and save it. We can see runtime saved there. That's good. That's now reloaded. And now if I go back on the browser and do a refresh, we can actually see that it output the call demo text as I put output in that component. So what's basically happening now is that I'm doing runtime debugging uh, in that context of the list, and I can start testing of how would I actually build this experience in this component uh, using the list extensibility component. So that's kind of the story. It is, it is something which we will get easier and better uh, as, the, as we go through this journey. Uh, so the next 1.15 preview release, will support that uh, overriding of item level, new edit and view forms. And you will need to do that debugging directly in the context. So it will not understand yet in the list level that you're associating custom component to the content type. So you need to do some level of a uh, tricks as I did in this demo. And that's the reason why, why we wanted to have this demo recorded as well. We'll give you a tutorial um, and then we'll give an improvements gradually as we move along towards the GA. In the GA, which is currently ETA, uh, uh, expected to release uh, by end of Q2. So that's by end of June, uh, this calendar year. Uh, we'll give you the API level support and deployment support with elements X and so if you are using the site scope deployment option for SharePoint Framework Solutions. And then we are looking into having a additional options uh, for this extensibility in the future as well. And no ETA on those and no decisions at this point that they will happen. But that's it for my demo. Hopefully that's interesting. Good to have uh, questions and, uh, and comments on the slide. I'll follow up on the comments uh, right after the call as well. Mm -hmm.